In this video, we are going to configure OSPF v3 to route IPv6 prefixes. The following topology with two areas is going to be used. This is a multi-area OSPF topology with area 0 and area 1. And here we have four routers connected all together. Each of router 1, 2 and 3 is having a prefix behind. For router 1, we have PC1, router 2, PC2 and router 3, PC3, which we are going to be using to test reachability between various prefixes. And uh, for the configuration, we are going to go through three steps. Step 1 consists of enabling IPv6 routing on each of those Cisco routers. Note that by default, IPv6 routing is not enabled on Cisco routers. So that is going to be the first step to enable IPv6 routing. Step two, we are going to create the OSPF v3 process on each of the routers. And step three, we are going to enable the OSPF routing on each of the routers interfaces. Some details to be considered here are, first of all, for all interfaces that are connected to users' networks, like F1 slash 0 for router 1, we don't want to be sending out routing updates. So we are going to disable routing updates for this interface, as well as for interface first Ethernet 1 slash 0 for router 2 and first Ethernet 1 slash 0 for router 3. Let's now go on the various consoles and do the appropriate configurations. Here, we'll start by testing reachability between various devices. On PC1, let's display the configuration. So here on PC1, we have IP address 2001db81 colon colon 2. On PC2, we have 2001db82 colon colon 2. And on PC3, we have 2001db83 colon colon 2. If we try from PC1 to reach to PC2 with the ping command, the host is unreachable. If we do the same and we try to reach PC3, the host is unreachable as well. So the purpose of configuring OSPF v3 is to enable those host to communicate to each other. Configuration for router 1. Step 1. Let's go in global configuration mode with the command configure terminal. And here in global configuration mode, first thing we want to enable IPv6 routing with the command IPv6 unicast routing. And we also want to forward to, we want to accelerate routing and forwarding on this device by enabling the IPv6 uh, Cisco Express forward. Now, our router one is capable of IPv6 routing. Let's create the OSPF v3 process with the command IPv6 router OSPF one. One here is the process ID. We could pick any number and uh, that will work. We just have to make sure that on other devices in this domain, we are having the same ID, the same process ID. So that is it. The process has just been created. As we can see here, the device is sending a warning message saying that the ID for the router has not been picked. So the ID is a parameter that identifies the router in the OSPF domain. If on our router we have in IPv4 addresses configured, the router can pick one of those IPv4 addresses to be the router ID. But for these routers, only IPv6 addresses are configured. So here, first thing we want to do is to enable the router ID. We are going to choose 1.1.1.1, enter, and here we are set. We also want to disable routing updates on undesirable in in interfaces. So we are going to say passive interface default. So all the 
interfaces on this router right now cannot send routing updates. And as we saw in the topology for router one, only fast Ethernet zero slash one should be able to send routing updates. Let's do that. So passive in no passive interface fast Ethernet zero slash one. That was the second step. Now the third step is to enable advertisement on pre of prefaces on various interfaces. So let's go on each interface. We'll start by interface first Ethernet 0 slash 1. Here we want to enable IPv6 OSPF 1 corresponding to the process ID that we created area. So this interface 0 slash 1 is sitting on area 0. So area 0. And we want to do the same for interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. So internet fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. IPv6 OSPF 1 area 0. That is all for the configuration of router 1. Configuration of the ABR, the area border router. All starts at the configuration and at the global configuration mode with the command configuration configure, configure terminal. First thing we want to enable IPv6 routing, and then we want also to enable IPv6 Cisco Express forwarding to accelerate the uh, routing uh, the, the, the forwarding. And then now we want to create the OSPF v3 process. Here, yeah, first thing to always remember, configure the router ID. There you go. So for this router, the ABR, all the interfaces are participating to the routing updates. So no need to uh, set it to the default, the passive mode, the passive mode for the interfaces. Next thing to do is now to enable the various interfaces. The networks, the prefaces on the various interfaces. We'll start here with interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. Interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. And this interface is sitting in area 0. Now we can see that the process, there is network established between this router and router of ID 1.1.1.1, which is router 1. Now, let's do the configuration also for the other two interfaces, 0 slash 0, which is in area 1, and 0 slash 1, which is also in area 1. That is the configuration for the ABR. Now, let's go to router 2 and do the configuration. Configuration for router 2. First step, all starts at global configuration mode. Enabling the IPv6 Unicast routing and the IPv6 Cisco Express forwarding. Now, let's create the OSPF v3, the OSPF v3 uh, routing process. And then, first thing, always think of the router ID here, 2.2.2.2. For router 2, we don't want routing updates to be sent out on interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. So the only interface to participate in routing updates here is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Let's do that. So we want all the interfaces to be passive by default, and uh, we want interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 not to be passive. Now, on each interface, starting by interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, we want IPv6 OSPF 1 in area 1 to be enabled. And also, 
we want this to happen on interface first Ethernet 1 slash 0 in same area. That is it for router 2. Now let's look at router 3. Configuration for router 3 all starts at the global configuration mode where we want to enable the IPv6 unicast routing and IPv6 Cisco Express forwarding. Now that that is set, our router is IPv6 routing capable, we want to create the OSPF v3 process with the command IPv6 router OSPF, the process ID of 1. First thing, always think of the router ID 3.3.3.3. And there you go. We also want to make all the interfaces passive by default. Then the only interface participating in routing updates, we want to enable that no passive interface for fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. So that is it, 0 slash 0. Now let's go last configuration step on each interface starting by interface first ethernet 0 slash 0 which is in uh, area 0 area 1 sorry let's do the same for interface first ethernet 1 slash 0 which is also on the area 1 So there you go, that is it for the configuration of um, OSPF for our three routers. And as you can see right now, there is a problem on router three. Now it's time for verification. Here on router one, let's do the show, show IPv6 route to display the IPv6 routing table and as we can see in this routing table in this routing table we have this route which is from the 2001 DB8 A2 colon colon A which is um, the route behind the ABR and we have this other route behind the ABR so right now we can see that there is an issue because in router 1 we can't see routes uh, behind router 2 and router 3 on the ABR if we do show IPv6 route we can see that here we are learning only the route sitting behind the R1 router. So here there is an issue. Let's troubleshoot and see what is the cause of the problem. If we do the show IPv6 OSPF neighbors, what do we get? Right here we have only one neighbor the router one so what's the issue let's first of all start by making sure that the appropriate configuration is made here so on router two what is the exact configuration so if we do show So, if we look at router 2, by displaying the IPv6 configuration, we will notice that for fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, the IPv6 address is correct. But for fast Ethernet 1 slash 0, there is a problem. There is the wrong IP. So, let's correct that and uh, see what happens. Also, if we display the running configuration for fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, we can see here that we omitted to add the IPv6 OSPF process to this interface. What about fast Ethernet 1 slash 0? 
everything is okay. So let's correct that. We go into global configuration mode and then we correct that. Again, if we look at the routing table right here, still we still have issues. Let's look at let's look at the process configuration for OSPF. So we do the show run um, section OSPF and as we can notice here, everything is okay. So for this router right now, everything should be okay. Let's go all over to R3 and see what is happening. So here on R2, if we display the IPv6 configuration, here we are good for fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and we are also good for this interface. Let's display the configuration for OSPF, show running config section OSPF. And uh, there you go, there is something missing. So we deactivated OSPF routing updates on all interfaces and we didn't enable it for the required interface. Let's look at the running config for interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 here. Yeah. Something missing as well. We didn't enable the OSPF process for this interface. What about fast Ethernet 1 slash 0? Here yeah, everything is good. Now let's try to correct that by enabling routing updates through fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. And there you go. You can see the the neighborship relation happening between a uh, router three and the ABR. And now we can display our routing table with show IPv6 route. And here we have route length from R1, route length from behind between R1 and ABR, route length between ABR and router 2 and still we are missing the route behind the router 2. So let's go back to router 2 and check. So here on router 2, if we do show the running config For interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0, we can see here that there is a missing statement for OSPF. Let's correct that by going on interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 IPv6 area 1. Now, if we come back to router 3 and do show IPv6 route, what do we get? Oops. Uh, show command. There you go. We have this slash 64 behind router 1. This slash 64 behind router 2. So we have uh, len on router 1. If we do the show IPv6 route, we can see that Here we are learning the slash 64 behind router 2 and the other slash 64 behind router 3. So the network is fully meshed. Uh, let's go to the various hosts and see if we can reach each other. So from PC1, let's ping all over to PC2. There you go. Successful. What about PC3? It is successful. So in this video, we showed you how to configure OSPF and how to test and troubleshoot OSPF for IPv6 address family. Thank you for watching.